Doing an arm is pretty good. For those of you not in the know, arm stands for adjustable rate mortgage, okay? You usually lock it in, I think it, what is that? I think you lock it in for seven years, and then after that, it'll adjust like every six months or every 12 months, right? So what you want to do, you want to clean this unit up, and then you want to put a Section 8 tenant in there. You put a Section 8 tenant in there, you're going to have a much, much higher chance of success, right? I'm going to get the basement real quick, and then we'll do that upstairs. Yep, this looks the same. Low-income tenants themselves, right? This particular neighborhood. All the low-income tenants themselves, folks. That is where your risk lies. That is where you get the bad tenant stories. Things like that, right? Welcome to the Investment Properties for Sales show, folks. Thing is selling at or above list. We are going to provide you guys with complete transparency and education. We take you to the video tour. Won't wise to you giving it to you straight. If you're going to be in Cleveland investing in rental properties, folks, I highly recommend you go Section 8. Section 8 is a great way to get a very high rental amount per unit. And perhaps more importantly, uh, it is a way to get your investment to be consistent. Okay, check this one out. 12614 Forest Avenue, right? Priced at 99.5. I believe you go Section 8 on this thing. It is going to provide you with the most stable long-term returns, right? Now, the returns, they look great. 875 a unit is what uh, you should be able to get out of this thing, right? And that's 1750 for an acquisition price, right? 99.5, you get 1750 in rent, right? That's great numbers, but the numbers themselves don't really matter if you can't actually consistently collect the rent, right? If you're constantly having to evict people or chase people down for rent and you're not actually collecting that $17.50 a month, therein lies the problem, right? The solution to that problem, y'all, is Section 8, okay? Now, if you go Section 8, you don't have to deal with evictions, right? As you see, uh, one of these units here, this is a recent eviction, right? The, the tenant that was living there, they weren't paying rent, so... They got booted, man. They got kicked out, right? So what you want to do, you want to clean this unit up, and then you want to put a Section 8 tenant in there. You put a Section 8 tenant in there, you're going to have a much, much higher chance of success, right? Now, if you guys watch the Tenants from Hell show here on Holton Wise TV, you'll see uh, there's a lot of rough stuff that happens in low-income investing, right? And I know a lot of people actually end up getting afraid of Section 8 tenants, okay? And that, folks... That's a problem for you. That's a problem with your thinking because you're incorrectly thinking, right? This is what happens, right? People see a property like this, and then I say something like, yo, you should probably put Section 8 tenants in there. You'll make more money. And then people go, oh, no, Section 8 tenants are bad. I heard bad things about Section 8 tenants. Even you show bad stuff about Section 8 tenants on your show. Okay, I hear where you're coming from, but your thinking is wrong, okay? It's not like you take this particular property and you could go Section 8 tenants who are bad, who are high risk, or you can go uh, non-Section 8 tenants who are low risk, really good, great credit scores, things like that. That's not how it works, right? When you take a property, folks, the property is going to be located in a particular type of neighborhood, and that neighborhood is either going to attract low-income tenants or like high-income tenants, right? When you're in a property like this, you're in a low-income area. This particular property is only going to attract low-income tenants. You're never going to get uh, tenants with like 800 credit scores that make six figures a year renting your 2-1 apartment in this particular Cleveland duplex, okay? So what you have is a property that's got a tenant base that is low-income. Low-income tenants themselves, right? This particular neighborhood, all the low-income tenants themselves, folks. That is where your risk lies. That is where you get the bad tenant stories, things like that, right? So it's not like you have this property and you can go with your Section 8 low-income tenants or you get like high-income good credit tenants. And, you know, it's up to you to pick. No, no, no. All the tenants that are going to want to live in this property, in this neighborhood for this price point, are going to be your low-income tenants. And when you're investing with low-income tenants, putting low-income tenants in your housing, y'all, 
That in and of itself already puts you at a heightened level of risk and non-paying rent and evictions and stuff. You see all the bad stuff that could happen on the Tenants from Hell show, things like that, right? But when you're already in this low-income pool, low-income asset class, the Section 8 tenants are less risky for you, the landlord, than the cash-paying tenants because all the tenants are low-income, but the Section 8 tenants, folks, their rent is paid all the time, on time, by Uncle Sam in the majority of the problems you end up dealing with, a lot of them are based on one simple thing, and that is the tenant's inability to pay their rent or their unwillingness to pay their rent, which leads to the majority of those problems, folks. So when you're in low-income investing, know that you're already at a heightened level of risk. You lower that risk by Section 8 investing, right? So a lot of people out there, I just want you to really, really play this video back, play what I said back, listen to it three, four, five times if you have to, to get it in your skull. Your Section 8 tenants are not more risky than your non-Section 8 tenants, folks. It's low-income tenants in general that are the riskier tenants, and when you have low-income tenants, the Section 8 tenants that are low-income are less risky than the low-income tenants that are not because their rent is guaranteed, folks. Think about that, right? So, with this particular property in mind, Section 8 investing is, in my opinion, the way to go. You take that unit that just had an eviction, I don't know, spend probably 15 k cleaning that sucker. Well, if you want, you could hire Holton Wise. It would probably cost us 15 k to clean that sucker up and then uh, get it rent ready, ready to rock and roll, bring in an 875 to a Section 8 tenant or a cash tenant tenant if you really wanted to. But I feel like if you're this far into the video and you don't want to go Section 8, I, f I feel like you might you, you might want to just like replay the video again because that's kind of the whole point of what I'm trying to teach you here. Uh, but about 15 k for that unit. And then the other unit that uh, didn't have an eviction, you'd probably fix that one up for like, you know, maybe 10, 12, 13K, somewhere in there. Probably 10 to 13K, I believe. Unless you wanted to go premium upgrades on both of these units, which we could do that. Uh, you know, get you like stone countertops. But typically, you don't need to do that stuff. Like for Mike, it should be fine in the low income space, right? So all told, you're looking at like 25K or so to have Holton Wise fix this up for you. And then you could generate 1750 in rent. Uh, or if you do it on your own, I'm sure you put in some elbow grease. Uh, you could actually probably do it on your own for cheaper than that. Uh, but if you're paying a full-fledged license insured and bonded contractor like that you should be looking at about 25k on top of that uh the particular property will need to go through cleveland's lead certification process uh it has not yet been done uh so what you want to do is after this video check out the lead certification video i've got it linked below this particular video you want to pay attention to that video and how the lead certification stuff works right there are new laws in cleveland and truth be told the city of cleveland uh much like the city of cleveland's government always does they're fucking up how they're doing stuff right they they haven't really been so consistent or great on how they're trying to enforce these lead certification laws i remember for a while uh, when they first like came out, because these laws are like I don't know, maybe like three years old almost now. Uh, when the lead certification process and all that stuff first came out for a while, they were not letting landlords evict tenants who weren't paying rent if their properties weren't lead certified. Like we had one of the housing court magistrates just throw out every eviction. Uh, for every Cleveland landlord who didn't have their house lead certified. But, like, the problem with that is, like, that's not the fucking law! <laughs> and magistrates in the Cleveland Housing Court don't have the legal ability to just create fucking laws. It's, like, not how the American judicial system works. Uh, so a bunch of landlord groups had to get together and sue them, and, of course, they won because, like, you know, the Constitution of the United States of America. So they're no longer doing that. Uh, now they're trying to, like, enforce it as you know, the law allows, which is like issue building code violations and things of that nature, right? So it's kind of a mess, kind of a scramble right now. Things are kind of out in the open and know that, you know, depending on when you're watching this video, things may or may not change, right? Because they're really trying to figure it out. But hey, that's freaking the government for you guys. If you think the government does things, A, for the benefit of landlords, or B, uh, in an efficient, effective way, you're batshit crazy. That's not how uh, dealing with the the government works, right? So definitely educate yourselves on the lead certification process by watching my video. I it's like a half hour video to really try to explain that. And you're going to want to probably do research after that because, again, things are in flux with uh, how, how the Cleveland government is doing this. So these are very much new laws and they're very much trying to work out how they're enforcing them. Okay. 
other than that, folks, I think that's about all you need to know with this particular property. But again, the numbers speak for themselves. 100 k 1750 in rent. You go Section 8, you're going to drastically reduce any level of risk you have. If all that sounds good, you're interested in buying it, send an offer to my team, sales at holdenwines.com. If you want to pay cash, include your proof of funds. By the way, in the email, please let me know the address. Don't just be like, I saw your video. I'll buy the property. Thanks, bro. But we got thousands of videos. How about you do us both a favor? Toss the address in that email. Hey, man, 12614 Forest. I want to pay 100 k cash. Here's my proof of funds. Or, hey, man, 12614 Forest. I want to buy it with a loan. Here's my pre-approval letter. Or, hey, man, 1216 Forest. I want to buy it, but I don't have a lender. Can you help me out? You're darn right I can help you out. Go ahead and send me an email, folks. I have curated a list of lenders. From all over the world, helping people like you from all over the world, right? If you're in California, you want to buy this, I got you hooked up with lenders. You're in Idaho, I'm going to hook you up. You're in Texas, I'm going to hook you up. You're in Singapore or Canada. Yeah, we have lenders that will hook up foreign nationals, right? Guys, we have lenders that hook investors all over the world up. 30-year loans, 25% down, fixed interest, or... You could do an arm, right? A lot of people forget that arms are available. I know over the last decade, uh, interest rates have been historically low, so nobody ever thought about doing an arm. But doing an arm is pretty good. For those of you not in the know, arm stands for adjustable rate mortgage, okay? You usually lock it in. I think it, what is that? I think you lock it in for seven years, and then after that, It'll adjust like every six months or every 12 months, right? Uh, so it can go up, can go down. And uh, the benefit to doing that is you could lock in an arm today, get a lower interest rate for the next seven years. And then if you're banking on uh, interest rates going down, you would want to refi at that time, right? Yeah, rates are a little bit high right now, guys. But guess what? Rates go up, rates go down. Rates go up, rates go down. That's the name of the game, right? So an arm might help you save now if you're thinking you're going to refi later. All right? Oh, one more thing before I get out of here. If you want to tour the property totally vacant, that's totally fine with us. You or your contractor or if you're working with, like, a different property manager or anybody. If anybody wants to get in there, just let us know. Sales at HoldenWise.com. Hit us up before 5. We'll get you in there same day after 5. That's Miller time, so we'll have to get you in the next day. Let's go. Already. It's very sweet. Painted the bottom of the tub. Yeah. That's, that's nifty. Yeah. I think this this looks new too. Right? Or was this here? The floor in the kitchen? It might have been here, but I think it might have been covered up. Like they had all the Yeah. Right? Okay. Do we need to get the uh, basement? Again, too? Or? I don't know. Pro probably. Yeah. I guess I would be too if I was in the next to an empty lot. Looks the same as last time. Yeah. The only thing that's different here is they put the motor in that bought this furniture, or they at least put the door on.
Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.